This is IBM Museum. I was getting ready for a just a quick video on running the system information tool on a model 85 K slash N and that's the higher level model than the X model that we've that we've run the system information tool on before but nothing can be easy. I went through and um, when I connected up the the model 85 just to just to check and see if you know if, if it had a good battery in it and was able to run if I had the system information tool and I don't even know what operating system or what condition this is in I I had my system information tool diskette that's bootable And I'm going to press the uh, escape key here because I want to get this booted up quicker. It has uh, 256 megabyte of RAM. And going through that process, even this regular process, it's a little bit time consuming. But I, I want to go sh through and show the error that's presenting. And I may have to do a little bit of troubleshooting because I'm not really certain by the indications I'm getting otherwise. It's going to quickly go through that memory count at least and then the cursor and this has a, an XDA2 adapter in the system and I don't have any diskette in the drive right now. These systems, you know, they don't drop you into ROM Basic either. If they don't have any bootable drives. And so we're just waiting for that, that error to pop up. And I can... Okay. So system complex SCSI error. And I'll probably show a little bit more of the insights of this. And so I, I did go through. I, I have my station over here. Fired it up. Went online. Got the reference diskette image. Um, I've got another K slash N around here. I think I, I moved it out of the location temporarily. And I may just have to bring it back for for going through any any further runs like this. I was just hoping that and see it says personal system two server eighty five reference diskette. But then let me drop that save image. And this is the clipped version because this is the using my old video capture. And it's just telling us that it the reference diskette won't run on the system. So and then to press Control Delete, well, Control Delete gets us back into the same place that we were before. And so I'm gonna just go through and power this down. Let's take the reference diskette out for now. And I'll turn this a little bit more. I had the uh, other flat panel display here, just in the hope that I, a second display that I could go through and test some things. And there is a, well, if I get it, okay. So there's a little bit closer view of the, insides of the 
model 85 K slash N. Now on the server 95s and, and we can go through and of course with moving the power supply, we'll get that, that cord disconnected, the electrical cord out the back because we're going to be doing some work inside here. And the other cabling, we're going to go through and we're going to remove the binding for that, the clips for the, the fast wide SCSI that's built into that system planer. And if you work on a model 85 or model 95 with this configuration, this tower, just be aware that they have there's drives, you know, that you can have in these spaces. And they can come very close to the cables and the and the power supply as it would go through and spin down. So you want to make sure that you don't do a guillotine type thing on on any drives or cables that you have in there. And that, that power supply, and it has the drive leads to the, in this position, there's, there's three drive leads. This is a standard model 95 and model 85 power supply. Just be aware that there's also an E-clip into the end of this in the spring and if that E-clip comes off, that, <laughs> that spring is gone and that rod is no longer assembled on that. So, and I can briefly poke just above and showing all that glorious 256 megabyte of RAM. And those are those commonly found well, commonly in the IBM PC server, 320s and 520s, what they call the EOS SIMs. It just has extra error checking. And so I'm trying to think of a good position that that's going to be in just to be out of the way. I want to go through. I've got, I do have a drive at the very bottom of this. And it, it may, in fact, even be that drive that the system is complaining about that it's not coming up or anything else like that. But just the ability to run the reference diskette. I have a Pentium Overdrive CPU in there. And this model is called the K slash N because that's IBM's coding for the K is a 46 DX 33 megahertz. The N is coding for a 46DX266. So right away IBM was telling you that the base CPU that would be in these models would be a, a K CPU of the 46DX33 megahertz or a 46DX266 megahertz. Even though it does have a a socket for the Pentium Overdrive CPU, and did not come stock with that with that CPU. And so, and it's not a quick release socket. I did go through, and when I started getting the reference diskette errors, went to my CPU drawer, and yes, I have a file cabinet with a CPU drawer, and got out my extractor tool. I'm probably not going to be able to get on that front edge of that, but pulling out and remembering the orientation for that overdrive CPU and typically this would be the beveled corner 
would be pin one in that corner. And that has a removable pan, uh, fan assembly and showing what it is. I don't know if that'll focus at all for this. I do have another camera now that um, that's a nice zoom in. I did that for the Kingston. 36 now video and that zooms in really nice uh, I may have the opportunity to to use that sometime I only have one HDMI capture and so I have that connected to the display output at this point okay and here is just a stock 486 DX 33 megahertz and pins look pretty straight. We'll find out when we try and get it into the, the socket. And remember, and you can see a little bit of a white mark there. That's visible on camera. I don't know, in that upper corner, showing that this is the pin one position. And of course, when the 46 goes in here, it's going to leave that outer row of pins with the Pentium overdrive. Okay, so there is that 46 DX33 seated in the CPU socket now. And you'll notice above it is a is a cache connector for the L2 cache and it's vacant. The K slash N is very finicky about cache modules. And um, with the Pentium Overdrive in there, and sometimes there can be a combination or just sometimes there can just be where it does not want to work with a work at all on the on the planer for even whatever mode you put in right back right through can be very finicky on okay and I'll I won't connect up the SCSI cable or, or put it on the on the mounts again because we may I just wanted to get to more of a base CPU okay so we've got everything still connected we will go through let's get it powered on I'll pop the reference to get back in And we want to make sure that it's coming up. Okay. And just be aware there can be blank video for sections of time too. I don't know. wonder if that, that chip, that 46 chip, should be good. And the KN does not have the info panel on it either. It does not have even the provision. Some of the, the driver circuitry is missing for that. So we don't have the CP codes. I should have my little par parallel port post reader <laughs> available and that could I wonder if I could lay my hands on that quickly but if we're not getting any video 
I may just have to try another 46 DX. So let me power that down and I'm going to pause the video. Okay, and let me get back the web cam on this. Another 46 DX33. And this is even marked as uh, DDK computer. So this is in some non IBM model. Didn't matter to me as I went through and was testing 46 CPUs. Okay. Make sure we don't crush anything coming down. We make sure we don't disturb that E clip. And we have electrical power disconnected. And that was sitting fully in that socket. I will set this one aside just with the point that it did not come up and I could mark I can mark it as being bad or test it in another system to the quick release sockets are so much of a improvement. I want to just quickly and the pins look good on this. But we'll put our I did have to straighten a few pins on this. We're looking at our orientation again. Sometimes I even had these marked for what CPU stepping I had gotten from them. And I don't see pencil markings on either one of these 46 CPUs. Okay, paying attention to cabling to get that back in place. down the retaining screw, plug in power, and start this one up. There we go. So there must be something with that other CPU. So we get a, quite a troubleshooting uh, process today. And I'm gonna go through and do escape for, and I've got that reference diskette in the drive. Quickly spins through that 256 megabyte of RAM, blinking cursor, and I'm not hearing that SCSI drive spin up. It, everything here could be related to that that drive not working. 
And this may be an opportunity for just me to leave this up on the bench and do some follow-up videos of another drive. I'm just trying to get this thing booting that I can go through or get it to run the, the reference diskette. So I could go through and have a run the system information tool on it for a short video. And we're already a little bit over 20 minutes of video time. And again, the XGA2 video and the system thinking about things can still have, you know, take some time. And it has that blinking cursor there. And again, and unless it's mixed up because I got this from the correct page. Okay, make sure what I want. Well, there's an easy way to do that. Okay. Because this is where I've got the diskette image from. That reference version 1.32. And if it's, it's telling us that that one does not want to run, even with the reducing it to a, a base CPU. I wanted to get the pod 83 out of there just to see if I could get it, if that made a difference with the, the reference diskette. So this is just going to it's, it's going to be a wrap, I think. I'm going to have to work a little bit more in a troubleshooting angle. Um, apparently, the substituting the, the pod processor for that 4060X33 didn't make any difference what the system was complaining about. But it did give a little bit of overview of the of the inside of that KN. And I'm going to, I'm gonna pause the video and just kind of quickly look and see if I can resolve um, why that reference diskette is not working. And then I will return, likely to close the video. Okay, and what I did is I went on to where that quick link of the software and drivers pulls up this page and I went through to look things over and in this area the first listing for that server 85 46SX well that's the X model of the uh, X sub model of the model 85 and then the server 8546DX towards the, the middle of the screen that is for the KN as it shows there the types 9585XKX or the XNX now I have that reference to SCAT, unless there's just something else to that where that file is, is different or something. I think I'm going to attempt to, I'll just pause the video and I'll attempt to download that and extract that to a diskette just to see, you know, if it's, are the, uh, if the, maybe the diskette images or something is mixed up on those. But let's see what that will do. Okay, now I've had to put this up on the, uh, the big screen to see it. I've um, gone to that 
same page with the XP system and it's a zip file once I click on that link um, even though the file is named differently we're just gonna we're just gonna see and able to download it quick let's go to our downloads directory and since this is XP we are going to we can uh, extract all and this is actually a an image file I'm just standing up just to see a little bit more of Browse to my computer to that C drive where we have the MS DOS and the ref disk. Okay. And I don't know if I've ran the There's that folder. Now, I don't know if I've ran WinImage before. No, just zero and it shows six minutes. Okay, so we are going to, and it's unregistered right now, and we are going to image. Okay, so we're going to extract. To we have to select up. How do we? I'm just not really. I thought there's a way to go through. Yeah, it should be. Then we'll diskette. Okay, I guess it's a save. Okay. So, we set it to use. Okay. So, let's do. That's what I was doing before. So I get a little bit of education in running WinZip. So I put that diskette, and I'm choosing to format and write disk. And it sees all those other files. Maybe this is a video on making reference diskettes from that zipped up image <laughs> format. And I'm going to go through, I can pause the video for this process. Okay, we're getting close. And I've had, I have my other flat panel connected up to the Model 85 just as a quick way to once I have that diskette ready to move it from one system to the other okay and it gave me a beep and the diskette drive stopped from spinning so we're going to go through and you that flat panel is very visible for that 
even though I may have to go through and control delete. And I'll go through, of course, and do the escape for the fast startup. I wanted to cut the, the heater off because I'm starting to see the, the static discharge, that not being a good thing. And I went outside and it's it has snowed. I wanted to, to check things over just to make sure I'm still in a good condition to motor home. And there's a there's a group of mule deer out there that are bedded down for the night in that little bit of the snow covered landscape. So that we can just barely see with my image where it is of that blinking cursor in the upper left hand corner Whatever lengthy period of time that it does. Okay, so there's the error. It has that new reference disk in the drive. We can see if there's any identifiable difference when it. Okay, so that's a little bit of different of. Uh, screen. So we've, uh, we've got a bad image there, I guess. And um, because that identified a different sort of splash screen that it was for the, and that other one might be for the, for the 9585X model could be. Okay. So I'm going to do enter, and it was telling me that there was an there was an error with the on drive, the onboard SCSI. So I'm going to actually pause the video and well, yeah, let me go through and I'll I'm going to pause the video and get that up on on the screen. Okay, so here we are. And I got that image of the sit diskette off the screen again. I don't know when I skewed that up. this being a text-based screen, it would still not work with that Atlanta video capture method I have. Okay. And for all that, I'll bet that Yeah, and it's just it's just the hard drive on the system. It's me not hearing it um, spin up, but at least we discovered something in that process too about that reference diskette image. And there's not going to be any way I can go through and continue the video from this point. I will just have to go through and look at replacing this hard drive. I don't 
I don't know what operating system it had on it or anything like that. It's got power and everything else connected to it. I think I'm just going to, that's going to be a video wrap. We're at right at 35 minutes of video. Then I'll go through and on another video I can replace the, the hard drive and go a little bit further as a lead into running the system information tool. It would be easy enough for me to locate another uh, drive to plug in here. So that is all for this video. <laughs> if you enjoy me trying to react, um, encountering these problems, click on that like button. And subscribe to my channel if you have not already, please. And recommend that to your friends that are interested in this sort of content. There's going to be a lot of this stuff still to come out. So that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.